Wow, what an amazing response to my best Ryzen 5000 motherboards video. You guys asked for more, you're gonna get more. In this video, we're gonna expand our coverage. We're gonna look at best ITX small form factor motherboards. We're gonna throw in a couple of cheaper X570s and some honorable mention B550s. And we're also gonna talk about features like front panel USB-C and how to get that on your motherboard. All of that coming up in part two right now. Hi, welcome to PC Builder. I'm Jason. First, thank you very much. I am just blown away by the response to the first best Ryzen 5000 motherboards video that I did. It's been about a week, getting absolutely fantastic response. Welcome to all the new subscribers. This is the kind of content that we're gonna be putting out on a weekly basis. We're gonna be focusing around the Ryzen 5000 launch. We're gonna do some additional motherboard uh, items today, but we're going to be doing best coolers for Ryzen 5000 since they, most of them don't come with one and uh, And a number of other Ryzen 5000 builds so stay tuned for that and subscribe for more content and help support the channel And of course if you missed the first video, which was the best Ryzen 5000 motherboards Then I'm gonna put it up in the card right here Go check it out watch that video and then come back here for all the extra additions Okay, first let's start off with the board we missed last time, which is the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Elite AX. Now, you might remember I recommended the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Elite. It's one of the best price performance boards out there in its price class. But what I missed is that for only about five to $10 more, depending on how much the Aorus Elite non-Wi-Fi is selling for, you can pick up the same exact motherboard with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0. It's a fantastic motherboard. I don't see why you wouldn't get the AX. Even if you don't need the Wi-Fi, you're probably gonna need the Bluetooth if you use Apple AirPods or any kind of Bluetooth headset. Really, really fantastic pickup. So I wanna recommend that. Right now it's selling at Amazon and Newegg for about $155. Okay, so one of the features I got asked about a little bit more than I thought was a front panel USB Type-C internal connector on the motherboard. Now listen, most cases still don't offer USB Type-C front panel ports, so I didn't really weight this heavily. But there are some of you out there um, that have cases like from brands like NZXT or Lee & Lee where they do have a Type-C front panel connector. So I wanna give you a couple options on how to take care of this. The first option is you just get a motherboard with a Type-C header and it looks like this thing right above my head here. It's a, actually a 20 pin connector rather than the 19 pin connector. And it is uh, reversible as well. It typically runs at 10 gigabits a second. There's a couple different things you can do. One is you can get a motherboard that has type C on it. Now this is uh, the MAG B550 uh, Tomahawk. So right here you can see this is where the, the, the front panel USB-C connector is. And you can see how it looks very different from the, the traditional 3.0 connector here. So that's one option. Now all of the MSI motherboards, in fact, do have um, USB-C type front panel, as well as the Steel Legend B550M and the B550, and a couple of the higher end ASRock boards as well. The Gigabyte boards I recommended don't. So if you're gonna get one of those, or if you're gonna get the ASRock Pro 4M, which is one of the motherboards I recommended, you can get an adapter for it. So what the adapter looks like is it's just this thing that plugs right into that 3.0 slot and it, it converts it to a 20 pin type C header. Now you're only gonna get the maximum speed out of this at probably five gigabits a second, but at least it'll work. Um, and frankly, unless if most people are just gonna plug their phone into it, if you are gonna plug in high-speed devices, then I would recommend looking at getting a motherboard that offers full support of it. There's a couple of different ones that I'll put in the, the description below. This one's for $9. I'll tell you though, I don't like it because you can see, if you put any pressure on this thing, it looks like it's just gonna snap right off. I actually quite like, there is one in here, the MZHOU. Uh, this one sells for $16, a little bit more expensive. But as you can see, there's, there's lays nice and flat. You're not gonna snap it off uh, with a horizontal uh, shearing force like you would something like this, for instance. So I'll put those down in the description. Okay, so let's jump into the cheap X570s, which is one of the things that people just kept 
uh, responding with, despite me saying that you don't need X570, nobody needs X570. Most professionals don't even need X570 because a couple of PCIe 4.0 slots and, and storage devices is all anybody needs. And frankly, nobody even needs that. B450 would be fine, except the updates aren't coming out and the boards are generally kind of crappy compared to the B550. So with that long caveat aside, if you just don't want to listen to me on this and you want an X570, but you don't want to spend like $250 or $300, I'm going to give you a couple of options right now, starting with a Gigabyte X570 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi. This is a board that sells for $200, but I have seen, including last Black Friday, it is low as about $150. So this is a board to keep your eye on uh, during Black Friday sales, Christmas, after, after Christmas sales it might get dumped down to the low end. And if it does, I would go ahead and scoop it up if it's cheaper than the B550 Elite. But if the B550 Elite is cheaper, I would definitely grab that one. The other boards you can look at going down the product stack a little bit here in terms of cost, but similar feature set is the ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Plus, another great motherboard, uh, $160. Now we're getting a much more reasonable comparison to the B550s. The problem with this board is it doesn't have BIOS flashback. And while the BIOS updating this board did come out in August, you are running a little bit more of a risk, I think, because the stock uh, for the X570 hasn't been selling out as often as the B550 stock has, where they've been replacing it with new motherboards that are shipping from the factory with the right BIOS. So I think you have a maybe a slight chance of giving getting a, a board here without the correct BIOS. If you're an early adopter, if you're buying this in a couple of months, then I wouldn't worry about it. And again, this is another motherboard that often we see heavily discounted on sales. And then of course, another X570 that I can recommend, although again, uh, not recommend, but recommend, is the MSI Mag X570 Tomahawk. Now this is a Wi-Fi enabled motherboard. It's selling for about $230. It has been really hard to get stock on this thing for a while. That's why the price is uh, much higher than, I believe the MSRP was originally much lower than this. Again, nobody needs X570. No, Almost none of you watching need this. So this motherboard, to me, total waste of money over something like the Aorus Elite because it comes with many of the same features as the Aorus B550 Elite, excuse me. So that's 70 bucks you could be dumping into buying a better graphics card, buying more storage, buying a lot of other things. But if you just don't want to listen to me and you, you want an X570, this is another option. And I believe this one also does have uh, BIOS flashback. Okay, uh, we're going to round it out with a couple of ITX boards. We're joined by Mr. Bear here who has decided that he absolutely will not let me record. He needs snuggles. So he's going to help us out. We're going to start off on with the first board in the ITX range, now these are boards that uh, are very, very small. This is for small form factors. If you're not familiar with what an ITX board is, they typically have one PCIe slot. And again, they're, they're intended for very small form factor builds. So I'm not an expert in these boards by any stretch of the imagination. However, people really, really wanted to know my opinion on them. So I went out and did some research. I looked at the some VRM testing with them. I looked at the feature set with each one of them. And I am prepared to make a couple of recommendations the first one is just a super cheap option, which is super cheap for ITX. That is $129, the ASRock B550M ITX slash AC. Now, it's almost always the case that ITX boards come with Wi-Fi already on them. Again, just because there's no room to add add-in cards and things of that nature other than a graphics card. This is a pretty decent board, but I would say in looking at the VRM testing data, you could probably put any of the chips at stock on this thing, but if you want to overclock, I would really just stick to the 5600X. Maybe the 5800X would be fine. Maybe the 5900X if you're going to include you know, quite a bit of airflow with this thing. It comes with one M.2 slot. Uh, not a lot to say about it in terms of the rear panel connectivity. You know, It's not the most fantastic, but then that's always the case with ITX boards. It's got a decent amount of rear connectivity. Uh, I can't remember if it's got a front panel USB type C header. It uh, it does not. So that's that's one potential downside to it. But again, compared to the ones I'm about to show you, because all of these boards are always expensive, this is a decent option. One of the downfalls of it doesn't have BIOS flashback. However, it has been shipping with the updated BIOS. 
since uh, since late August. So you're probably going to be okay getting one of these boards. Okay, so if you want to build a small form factor build, getting getting an ITX board, and you want to be able to have a 5950X, 5900X, and overclock it, let's take a look at some of your options there. Or if you're just looking for BIOS flashback to make sure it's compatible, the next board we, we have to go up to is all the way up to $180 at the Gigabyte B550i Aorus Pro AX. Now this board is actually quite impressive. One of the things that's really nice about it is it has two M.2 slots. Uh, it uh, it also has a two and a half gigabit uh, Realtek LAN. It's got uh, several USB 3.2 uh, Gen 2 ports, including a Type C. What else? The connectivity is, is roughly the same for all the motherboards I'm about to go over. So just assume that there's not a lot of difference. This does have USB, I'm sorry, BIOS flashback. So that is a big deal to you, then go for it. I don't believe, in fact, I know for a fact that this does not have a type C header for the front panel. So if you have an ITX case with a front panel USB-C header, let me give you another option. Coming up a little bit more to $194 is the ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming ITX board. Again, all of them come with Wi-Fi. The rear panels on, on all of these is roughly the same. You know, roughly the same amount of connectivity here. It does have a type C internal header on the motherboard. So if your case has a type C port, you can plug it in. You can see it right there just above my head, actually. Okay, I don't typically like telling you boards to absolutely avoid, but in this case, I feel like public service message here. I would absolutely avoid the MSI MPG B550i. And you're probably asking yourself why, because overall, it's got a really good feature set. It's got good back panel. It's got a lot of things going for it. The problem with this is that the CMOS clear pins, they could just put a button on the back of it like a lot of other boards, are actually inside the back panel. You have to remove the back panel in order to get to them. So if you screw something up in the BIOS, if you have a, some kind of mistake where you're going to need to reset, uh, clear, rather clear the CMOS, you're actually going to have to take the motherboard out. It's already hard enough to build a small form factor build, let alone taking everything out just so you can pull the back panel off the motherboard and hit the hit the pins with a screwdriver to clear the CMOS. To me, that's terrible engineering and super unfortunate because otherwise this would be the only board I really recommend. I wouldn't even go to the other boards, but I just feel like I'm not going to put anybody through that. So I can't recommend this board. So that's going to wrap up our motherboard series. This is part two. If you didn't see part one, I'm going to put it up in the card right here. Please, of course, continue to support the channel. It's so much appreciated. It's really helping grow. Subscribe, like, and click the bell icon. Do all the clickety clicks. Now, next week, I want to take a look at best air coolers for the Ryzen 5000 series. Only the Ryzen 5600X comes with an actual cooler, and it's the Ray Stealth cooler. It'll probably be okay. We'll have to see when testing comes out. But I want to give you some options to put at least a, a budget cooler on there, as well as something beefier for each of the other chips so that you can overclock it. So if you've got some ideas in terms of the coolers you'd like me to take a look at, please put it down in the comments. Also, if you just hate some of the motherboards that I've suggested, or you, you have other motherboards that you think I should have looked at, down in the comments, what do you think of the ITX boards, if you're a small form factor person? Down in the comments, let's keep the conversation going. It's been a lot of fun. That's going to do it for this one. We'll catch you on the next one.